All right, here we go, Riff Raff. Welcome back to Vlad TV. 10 years later. 10 years later. 10 years later. We did one of your first ever interviews, I yep. think. Yeah. A long now, time ago. 2012. So the first time you had Codeine. Yeah. Yeah, we hung out afterwards. I drank lean with you for the first time. And only time, I think. Ever. Yeah. First time ever, Codeine. I, I fell asleep. Big sleep. You yeah, not, not really much of a story there. <laughs> I was hanging out with y'all, drank some lean and fell asleep. That's it. That's <laughs> right. I think I took you- You uh, didn't get a cold. What was that? You knocked out any cold you any potentially could have had. Any cold, right. I think uh, I took you to the Gucci store for the first time. Nope. Well, f you what? taking me, if you were the well, first, first, well, first- I don't think you owned any Gucci at the time. I think I bought you your first- man, No? Come on, man. That wasn't true? Nah. Okay, my bad. My bad. Remember, <laughs> I, I, I sold you my Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah, we did something. Didn't I trade you? Oh, you sold it to me? I sold it to you, yeah. Yeah. We yeah, I remember you, you weren't sure if it was real or not, but then I showed you I had my initials on it. Oh, and you're like, oh, yeah, that. right. We did some trading. Yeah. It was cool. Knowing each other 10 years, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, since that weight. time, uh, I've lost like 30 pounds. You've gained like 30 pounds. Something and muscle. Like that. You know? Somewhere in there. Made a few millions. Got you to. and me. Got to. Yeah. We've done well for ourselves. You moved to LA. I moved to LA. Exactly. You moved to Florida. Somewhere. Yeah. And other places, other homes all around. Got to move around. You've done a lot, man. You lost too much for Congrats. me. Congrats. Congrats. Well, it was interesting. I was watching one of your interviews and you said that, uh, well, 2014, after you dropped your debut album, that was the first time you had a million dollars in your bank account. Mm -hmm. How did that feel to, to be grinding well, for that long to finally have that, that amount? I mean, great until I found out about taxes in, in California, <laughs> living here. Right, because you didn't really know about. Right, I didn't understand all that, and then moved to Vegas for a while, then Arizona, now Florida. Florida was a good move. I moved out like four years mm -hmm. before, right before COVID, three years before COVID. Yeah, California has the worst taxes. You know, I, I have to pay a lot to live here. You know, when you go down south, it's like way, way better. Are earthquakes still out here? Uh, yeah, there was one like last week in the studio. Bad? No, nah, not that bad. It just kind of shook for a second. Do people's houses get shook still? Or did all those? Uh, all I mean, I've had a shaking shake house. houses. I mean, I've had my chandelier kind of move after the, you know? <laughs> You're like, oh, damn, that was real. It's not too bad. But California's nice. California's okay. nice. Well, I remember in 2014, the biggest news when it came to you was you and Katy Perry. You guys were at the VMAs and you guys had the matching jean outfits, mm -hmm. which was kind of like a, an homage. Well, to Versace made, made it for us. We didn't like, Versace made every single item we were wearing. Okay. Cause it seemed like it was sort of an homage to, to Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears. Well, on if, the red if, carpet. if, if Kate, Katie had told or talked with Versace and, and, and told them, told her to make it like that mm -hmm. and then I, I don't i don't know she didn't i didn't i, I saw the stuff in the paper after right but oh, okay so that wasn't intentional i mean well, from I, you i, I didn't no they, they just made it for me and they got my size and stuff okay but I, I i i mean it was all versace like the interior i still have the stuff but oh, you still have it it's cool yeah I mean, what was the whole situation with you and Katy Perry? Because you guys did the song, uh, This Is How remember. We Do. That was so long ago, man. It was just a good time. Yeah? It was like a very, I mean, people still talk about it. People talk about it today as if, like, they'll bring that up and be bring up stuff from, like, I was on TV or something from, like, that. that those were time periods where it was, like, a one-week period of, like, just epic shit that, went, that just got put on the Internet. But there's there's so much stuff to happen in the last ten years. Like I can't keep up. That was pretty epic, though. Good time. I mean, Katy Perry is one of the biggest music. Stars yeah, she's an on icon for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did you guys maintain? She's a, the family and stuff now. Would you guys maintain like a friendship? Or I haven't talked to her in years. She oh. she has a family and stuff now. Right, but doesn't mean y'all can't be friends. I mean, you know, people start 10 years later and people have families, like people don't stay in touch. I haven't, I haven't talked to her in over five years. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Well, if you want to talk about what's happening recently, your little cousin, Mac McClung, did Won his the dunk contest. And then um, 
I saw he was in, um, I haven't talked to him in over a year, but I, then I saw in, uh, he played, he, then he, he was on Philly. Mm -hmm. And then right after the All-Star game, I think then he had like almost a triple-double. Mm -hmm. And and then I, I, I don't know what happened. Well, yeah. Like they, they, then after that, it was playoffs, mm -hmm. and he, didn't get, he hasn't played in the playoffs or nothing. Oh, right. Well, you said the Lakers and the Warriors kind of fumbled. Hmm? You said the Lakers and the Warriors fumbled when it came to him. Yeah, a lot of teams, any team that had him, it didn't. I mean, right after the dunk contest, he had a triple double. Mm -hmm. Like he had like 30 points and 10 rebounds and 10 assists or something like that, or nine rebounds or nine assists, something like crazy numbers like that. And then after that, I don't think I've seen him play. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think he, I don't know if they already maxed out their playoff budget. But he should be playing. He should be back next year in the NBA for sure. I don't. I don't, I don't know the situation. Yeah, I mean, you referred to him as the the new Ivory Iverson. Yeah, he's Ivory Iverson. <laughs> yeah, That's dude, a he's name, man. Ivory. He Iverson. could average twenty and t like he showed that he could do. He's an NBA player. You know. Have you ever played with him? No, I haven't. I haven't played with him. Okay. Yeah. Because you know you were really balling. Like, yeah. I guess, uh, high school, college. Mm -hmm. You at your prime during that time versus him, who would win? Him. He's an NBA player. <laughs> okay. I was just checking. Yeah. I was just checking. Okay, because he was actually the only, well, he was the first G League player to actually be in the slam dunk contest. So not only was he in the slam dunk contest, but he won the slam dunk but, contest. But, but before that, he had already played in the NBA game. He had played for Chicago. Right, but he before. was G League at the time. Well, right, okay. Yeah, so that's they what brought I'm him saying. up yeah, to he let had him like do a two week it. contract, I think, at yeah. the time. So it was And then like, he got into in the yeah, for Philly. And then right after the also break, then he uh, had uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's correct. That's I, I didn't know that. That he was the only like player who, but the, but I guess it was because he got yeah the, yeah the like contract he got the two week contract the temporary two week contract. yeah a lot of people don't want to do the dunk contest these days right I guess not I mean it doesn't really have the prestige it had back in the day yeah. you know it's like a lot of players like, like him was like yeah why not like, people <laughs> don't people don't know what the you know the the skill level or something and they see that and they're like okay yeah well now yeah. he's a household name and then exactly yeah so so he's your your little cousin. Uh, did you know him like when he was growing up and everything? Were you guys, still, I mean, I mean, I were mean, you guys close on, at all? Or just on the saying? cool, like we like <laughs> we aren't actually cousins. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you just referring to him as your cousin? Cause... Yeah, dude. We were talking ever since. Like, in, so when he was like a sophomore or something in high school, then we would like be talking on the internet, and then we start talking on the phone, and like I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna send this. Uh, I'm gonna send this to ESPN. I'm gonna send your highlights to like ESPN and World Star and those mm. people." There. And I sent it, and then they start posting. Then they post on ESPN or like Sports Center or something, and then shit took off. That's what's up. So you're not actually related to him. Nah. Okay. Well, people see us and they think we're like we. we I don't know something. They see something. Oh, so you didn't even come up with the whole cousin thing. This was the we internet. just talked, we were talking. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. What are your thoughts on the whole John Moran thing that just happened with him flashing the gun for the second time? I, I, I just I, I I don't keep up with really the internet. I like John Moran as a basketball player. I think people. I think the internet and then the it's the company's fault. Like so so whatever company, let's say NBA, it's the NBA's fault for taking something that's on the personal life of somebody that's off the court. Now, if he was on, walking on the basketball court with a damn gun and dropped it on the court and it fall off his shorts while he's hooping, and it's like, okay, that's a problem. There's some shit that didn't go on in the NBA arena. Don't yeah. involve, NBA shouldn't be involving themselves in stuff that happens off the court. They should really try to not even converse about that. And uh, because when you're dragging in the internet stuff, now you're giving leeway to like, people in the comments and haters or somebody making multiple fake accounts and you're giving them that power that, ooh, we can fuck up somebody's money. Ooh, we could take somebody's NBA contract. Ooh, we could do this. And now you're going to get more of that if the NBA is listening. If a brand is a high-end fashion brand, whatever, whatever, and then they have a model or a something, and then the internet, there's comments of people, let's say it's a competition, let's say it's Balenciaga versus Fendi, and then Fendi makes fake accounts. I'm just saying, this never happened, but I'm just saying, then somebody wants to go bombard the internet and talk shit about somebody and actually start a smear campaign. Smear campaigns are real now. Mm -hmm. It used to be only during political campaigns. Now it's like you could destroy anybody if you want. Especially, you know what I mean? So, so the John Morant or whatever, like he's a great basketball player. Will, will they find a way to like 
anything he's doing, put a magnifying glass on and make sure that, that the fucking, I don't know, you know what I mean? But taking the stuff from the internet and then magnifying it and making something bad happen, like that's been going on for the last like five, 10 years now. And it's getting like, I, I see through it. Yeah. No, but, I mean, I feel you. That, that was him. Did he in, physically in, hurt somebody? No, he was okay. in the car with his friends jamming out to NBA Young Boy, and at one point just decides to pull out a gun and wave it around while rapping along to the lyrics. What was it? Was somebody else filming it? Yeah, his homie that was driving pulled out a phone, and he was on IG Live. See, and this I, is two I, months I, after he pulled out I, the right, gun. Right, right, but I, yeah. I see that people shouldn't. I guess IG Live, like, don't give them all that. I, like, IG Live like, is the devil, man. I, mean, I, I don't make, understand why people make on, only film fans. around you. you. Have an OnlyFans, so it's only your fans filming something, <laughs> and then, and then if no matter what it is, like, so it's not so that if somebody's filming it, then it's your only your fans watching it. So your fan isn't gonna have their credit card and their ID on there, and then be screenshotting something that could get you in trouble and put it on the internet because they aren't allowed to. So they can't be used. That can't be used. Nowhere. Yeah, but, but they could do that. All they have to do is just, just pull just out can't. a phone and, and do a screenshot of your of their own computer and then post it. That's well. Then that was AI. Then that was CGI. <laughs> that was CGI. Somebody put that there. I don't know where's that at. I don't see it. I don't see it. Don't give too I many. Like did something happen. Before with most artists where they're showing too much. Don't get, you can't give the public too much because the public is going to drag you down. They might not, everybody ain't, mm -hmm. so people might be waiting for you to do something so they can, so just don't. Well, That's why I don't really do too many interviews and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. you're right, you don't. Mm -hmm. It's been 10 years since our last one. Yeah. <laughs> well, didn't you say you're supposed to be in a, the White Man Can't Jump reboot? That's what, it, it, are you saying that I should have been? Well, you had said in an interview that you were supposed to be in that movie, or there yeah. was talks about you being who? in that movie. Okay, so it should have been me and, and who? I don't know. I mean, Wesley's a little old these days, so. Me and John Morant? You and John Morant. Fine, yeah, me and John Morant. <laughs> White Man Can't Jump. White Man Can't Jump. Yeah. <laughs> the reboot. Well, they got Jack do. Harlow in it. I, I like Jack Harlow. Yeah, I like Jack Harlow, too. I, but I, me in movies is, come on. That's what. Come on. Of course. Did you guys ever work out the whole Spring Breakers thing? We talked about that in our last interview. Um, I mean, I'm cool with James Franco. He doesn't really do interviews and talk in public much anymore. You know, Harmony Korine has always just been a, cre a creative person and mm -hmm. doing like art. I I've actually learned from like both of them about just like do doing things not internet type stuff. Just picked up on this like from conversations. Mm -hmm to not just be just so much giving everybody everything. Well, yeah, I remember at the time that we did our interview, that movie hadn't come out yet, right? You were telling me about it, mm -hmm. but I hadn't seen it yet because it wasn't released. And yeah, then, I was supposed to be in the, in the movie. That's right, a, yeah. right. But, I was supposed, it was supposed to be James Franco and me. Exactly, exactly. But then after I saw it, and I saw James Franco's character, I was like, oh, okay, this is so riffraff, right? Right, so, so you saw like, <laughs> I think everybody thinks that I'm always just like making up some like no, you story definitely or fabricated not So like, up. there's so much shit that I've, I've said and then it's kind of like boy who cried wolves, like, oh, he's talking so much that it, I've, I've learned to just kind of like do more than I just talk about. But yeah, that was, that was, that was a, they just need to make Spring Breakers too. And have you in it? Yes, me and James Franco. I guess you can't have Gucci Man in it because he he died in the last one. But it's, but it's a Harmony Korean movie. You, why can't you? Can do yeah, you can bring him back, you right? You can be a zombie. It was a dream. You know, <laughs> no, James Franco starts the movie starts off with James Franco waking up, and he's like, "Oh, it was just all a dream." Right. And he's picking me up from somewhere. I don't know. Any anything can happen from, from the the truck shop. Yeah, he's picking up from the truck shop. I candy painted a right exactly a house. I believe you said this. You were supposed to be in uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Am I right? I suppose I, I've had five shows that actually got filmed mm -hmm. and, and that didn't make it out. Huh. Okay, so let's start with Sonic the Hedgehog. From what I understand, you had a couple scenes in there that ended up not making it to the movie. Yeah, no, I can't really say. No? I oh. mean, yeah, that's... Okay. That's the thing, like, you know? Okay. I can't, there's, there's certain things I just can't, I, I can't say. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. What were the other shows that you were supposed to have? Well, we had a show with Rob Deirdrick, right? So it was a show it was supposed to be called Neon Nightmare. Okay. So it was um was Super Jack and 51 Minds. And so after the ridiculousness, mm -hmm. after on ridiculousness, then he called me. I was in the front, called my friends who turned the radio down. Do you know Kane? You, you remember my friend Kane? He's with the baby now? Uh, I the don't. The big friend? 
I don't know. No. Anyway, so we're, we're, we're in the car, and then he, he was basically saying, like, I should have a show just like the Robin Big show, where mm-hmm. it would be me and my friend. But then also there was, was going to be, like, sketch comedy. And then we filmed it, and while we're filming, like, all the producers from every show on MTV when they're filming behind the scenes, Dylan Francis was supposed to have a show, too. They showed me, like, clips of his that was, it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It was a good show, but they didn't pick that one up either. But then we filmed mine. All the producers who go film at all the the shows, they all flew to my house to like, and that's right when I bought the Cody and Castle. And then so we're filming the whole show, and then like the the lady who green lights everything, like she took a job after twenty years working like with Fifty One Minds, she took a job at YouTube to be like the marketing director or something. Mm. And then any produ- uh, like any production she was a part of that she was gonna get a percentage, they just scrapped it. Oh. So they wouldn't let her get a percentage of working over here and then the residuals of this. So they like scrapped everything that she worked on, which was also my show. And oh, then man. Rob went for, and he's like, I haven't talked to the owner of this whole company ever. I've never had to talk to him because I've got everything green lighted. I can't believe this isn't going through. And then he went and met the dude and he's like, I'm sorry. We can't get to use this show. It was like a half a million dollars down the drain. Another show, TBS, with me, Dirt, and Andy. Mm. And it was uh, produced by Todd Phillips. Oh, wow. Okay. And we produced by Todd. Wait, you're talking about DC? Todd Phillips. Todd who made, Phillips. Who made Hangover. Right. But didn't, I, didn't he also do a bunch of the DC movies? Todd Phillips. The one who, who whoever the producer for Hangover. Right. But I'm saying he did a little way more than that. Right. I mean, <laughs> the hangover I can't keep is up. just a tip of the iceberg. You know, and I can't even keep uh, he did he did the Joker. Okay. <laughs> so we filmed that film. So it's he did all the hang, yeah, he did all the hangover movies. He did War Dogs, um, Borat, so, Old School. So you would expect that this will be per- green lighted. It of didn't, course. we didn't yeah. go into a meeting and we're trying to film a sizzle reel. He, we had full production. Four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars, everything, whole week filming, whole show gets. We film the entire trailer in the first episode, and then somehow, show got scrapped another time. If this is a third time, me, Dirt, Andy, Candy Ranch. It was gonna be a Tim and Eric uh, for Adult Swim, half a million dollar production. Kimbo Slice was in the, on it also. Me, uh, Dirt, Andy, Kimbo Slice, whole show filmed. Didn't get picked up. Wow. That's three for real actual shows. Yeah. Luckily, you didn't have to put up the money for those. But a lot of the money got lost in the process of it. But but that's sort of TV for you. Like, they do that all the time, from what I understand. Like, you know, you see it all the time with networks where, like, a new crew would come in and, and they would want the credit for all the shows that they're bringing in. So they just scrap everything that was done before them. Like th- I've heard this story over and over and over again. It's a cool story. It's a cool story, but not for you though. Good times. So are you still trying to get a TV show going or are you just- I'm, I guess I need a, a movie agent or a director to be like, yo, I need you to play Joker. I need you to play Mr. Freeze in this movie. Like mm. I need somebody, if somebody came and told me this is gonna happen. But like, I mean, auditions or, I mean, even going filming an entire, thing like if that could get scrapped i mean i guess you just got to keep doing auditions i mean me I, not me I, I don't know i don't know how to do audition well i mean speaking of entertainment like that i remember seeing you in the wrestling world at one point yeah what happened with that okay so you were in a match with uh kurt angle versus ray mysterio jr and you were in in ray's corner right i think so right and that was wwe right i don't know what that was but it was pretty big though whatever it was okay how did you i mean number one were you a wrestling fan growing up yeah okay who was your favorite wrestler growing up macho man ultimate warrior mr perfect hulk hogan i guess hulk hogan right yeah, wasn't like, hulk hogan hulk training hulk hogan. you at one point hulk hogan jimmy hart yeah okay what was it like being trained by hulk hogan we didn't get to the training part. Oh. Yeah. So what happened? Well, we were supposed to like do something with WWE. Mm-hmm. And then I think, and see, I don't even want to say nothing that actually ends up being bad. But I 
think something crazy happened with Hulk right after that, right after we were supposed to start training. Like something crazy. With well, the whole Gawker thing with the sex tape thing? Or? I don't know. I don't, even, I don't even want to say something bad, bring okay. up something bad on, on the Hulkster. Yeah. You know? But it was, I think something happened. Something happened where I was going to be in WWE, but then something happened with something else. And then it, it kind of got pushed aside to the point where it's like, so it didn't work out. Well, because I could totally picture you being in the WWE. Like when I saw that, especially after you bulked up, I'm like, oh yeah, of course. This, this makes all the sense in the world. I mean, when you see like, you know, um, you know, like Logan Paul and everyone doing it. I'm like, oh yeah, that was, you were almost doing that before. No, you were doing that before then. You got, this day and age, you got, it, it doesn't, it's more of a, like, from what I've seen is so you either got to know somebody or you got to have like your, these social media stats that are like outrageously, that's where they go by. Mm. And the same thing with labels. Like if you don't have X amount of Spotify listeners or something, it's not based on, whatever else it maybe would have been based on in the 80s so it is what it is but or you have to have a certain agent i don't know mm -hmm. i mean were you actually training for wrestling and kind of going through the process and, and so forth or I mean, that's what me and hulk were about okay. to do no i just thought maybe you were doing it on your own as well before he said yeah i mean in. i train every day i work out and stuff like right, that. right but wrestling seems like a specific exactly type of so thing. to get into that type of training and stuff then you have to go with like the hulk or something yeah and i didn't we almost there well, listen, it may have actually worked out in your favor because I've interviewed, you know, ex-wrestlers. Like, um, I just did Jake the Snake. Mm -hmm. uh, I did um, New Jack. And these guys were messed up. You know, I mean, even guys partying, like... They were though. Was that? Yeah, but they were partying. They had no, no, time, but I'm talking time. about the damage they took in the ring. Yeah. Like, for example, Ken Shamrock, right? Yeah. Who was a, a very yeah, accomplished a UFC a fighter. Fight. He said he hurt himself way more in wrestling than he did in UFC. And wrestling is supposed to be quote unquote scripted. Yeah, well, well, it might be fake, quote unquote fake, as in like kind of like this the script of the play in the back and forth. But like when you're like body slamming somebody, like yeah, if you're playing football on the side of the house, like you're gonna get hurt. You're playing, you're doing this wrestling that's in front of everybody. They're gonna make it. They're, they're, no matter what the script is of who's gonna win, like you're gonna get like you're jumping off a of fucking. 20 foot. 20 feet onto cement. <laughs> yeah. That's still 20 feet onto cement. Right. But it's a little different than someone actually trying to punch you in the face as hard as they can. Or kick, sure, but kick even you if, you, if that and... punch in the face is, uh, or their slap, they're like, okay, I'm going to slap you. And then they slap you like, oh, that was just fake. No, uh, but it really slapped you. You know what yeah. I mean? Like whatever it is. Like, yeah, that, they're still doing it though. Fair enough. Well, like I said in the beginning of the interview, when I met you, you were really skinny. And now you're what, 40 pounds heavier? Probably like, yeah. Okay. So what made you decide, hey, listen, I'm going to bulk up and I'm going to really transform my body and, and, and get, get ripped? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get bigger. Okay. Lift weights. Okay. I think like there was one point I was like eating what I like just as much as I could, like anything. I got too, I gained too much weight. Oh, so you got kind of fat. I was like 250. Oh, 250 with no muscle. It was, no, well, it was under there somewhere. <laughs> but the muscle stopped at about 225. Okay. <laughs> the I'm like probably 210 right now. Okay. So, so did, you, like, did you have like a gut? I mean, at one point? Did I? Yeah, yeah I was 250. So That's what I'm saying. At like, 250, yeah, you had the gut. Yeah, then I was like 225 is like biggest possible muscles. Mm -hmm. And then like by 250, it was like kind of covering up the muscles. Mm -hmm. It was getting real, uh, real peanut buttery peanut buttery okay <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> so was it just strictly working out yeah and diet or did you take some supplements you know you know some people mess around you know for example jose canseco you know did the whole human growth hormone thing he messed around with steroids did you yeah, try that I, I did hgh before okay so you did that yeah did it make a big difference yeah i mean i felt i felt i mean you get you but but i haven't done that since for seven eight years but i mean i still kept weight on okay so you took like it it doesn't, you it doesn't like you it's like you bulk up and then you like deflate yeah i don't know how it works i've never taken it you know i don't know but it when you start taking it was it a, like a a real quick difference like damn like i wouldn't be able no to no no you gotta really actually you gotta be working out or it doesn't do anything okay but you so if you just inject yourself and <laughs> eat no, sandwiches you nothing will happen nothing 
okay. But you really hit or the maybe gym you hard. Just, yeah. If you, maybe if you were just trying to put on weight and you just continue to do that and you just continue to eat, 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 maybe, some, I don't know. But I, I mean, it was, I mean, I've been working out for the last like 10 years. Like not every single, I mean, every day I do something. Mm -hmm. Whether it's run two miles or a hundred pushups or fucking calf raises on the stairs. I'd something, I'd do something. And then there, during the weightlifting time when I was the weights like seven days a week to the point where I just can't move. Like just lift every single day. Huh, do you have a gym at your I house? I think what it does, I think that, that brings up a good point. I think what uh, if you're like on something, mm -hmm. it gives you the, the strength to, Continuously be working out, and if you and then it gives you the energy to keep working out, and I gives you you, you don't get tired after a certain yeah, and then reps. you have yeah. energy early in the day, and you do that, then you, you're doing you do you gotta be working out, you're working out, and you're like you're like wow, I'm not even sore today, or it's not as sore, and then you could still work out, uh -huh. and then you're hungry, so it's a combination of everything, like you're just like this, just okay. When you stop taking it, did you notice a big difference? Um, not. Not necessarily at at first, but you definitely after like a probably a month or something, you'll realize like, oh, I'm kind of like I don't feel like working out as much, hmm. and I, I don't feel as like like the pump isn't there as fast. So then you like you know try to take a pre workout or just start taking protein powders or something like. But there's I mean there's some people who's like they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do nothing, but then they take one shot a week or something and if that's their and they look like an action figure hmm. isn't that a lot better than drinking and smoking and feeling like shit every day wouldn't you want to wake up and feel like an action figure with yeah no hangover yeah of, of course man of course i mean listen all i, I lost talk, 30 pounds so all so I, i'm all i'm all into if this. you yeah like honestly if you took something oh i'd just be ripped and, up and you know and you just start you to have the energy to work out you probably be in the best shape of your life I think Jeff Be Bezos. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, like, he looks great. Best he's ever looked, right? Of course. He's also the richest man in the world. But then he has, so maybe he has time to work out, but you got he's finding some time to work out now. Well, he's, yeah, I mean, he quit his job. He's not the CEO of Amazon anymore. Great. He's just hanging out with his lady. Make your money, wake up, more yacht. <laughs> wake up with more money than you went to sleep with. <laughs> right. And go to the gym. Yep. It's not a bad life. I, I would love that life. You could do it. I would love to quit Vlad TV right now and just work out and. You really Hang out on yachts. You really good. I need a few more dollars. Okay. I'm getting there. Right. I'm getting there. You just got to move out of California. Right. Where I'm paying too much taxes. <laughs> well, I was introduced to you by Diplo. Uh, Diplo, uh, I forgot how it started. I think, I think he, I wrote an article about him and he responded and we kind of went back and forth sort of jokingly. And then we got on the phone and he was like, yo, I just signed this new artist called Riff Raff. Can you give him an interview? And I'm like, sure, I got you. And then that was our first interview. Um, and you had signed to Mad Decent, I think right around that time. And then that led up to your album, uh, Neon Icon. Yeah. And, and you said in this one interview that you wish you had actually stayed with Mad Decent and kind of, instead of just dropping, 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 that yeah. you had focused on another big album. You know, so, so tell me about your experience at Mad Decent and with Diplo and everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, I had the, it was like my first big, it was my first debut album. Mm -hmm. It's like the, where I would say it's like uh, the definition of like, I became a real artist, like not a, like seen as an internet artist. I mean, it full, it's a complete full album with, huge names and great artists and great production and Diplo produced all that. I mean, and I just like, I mean, to this day, like right now, I probably have a thousand songs that aren't released. Like every every day, every week, I make at least five to 10 songs. So regardless if I'm dropping albums or not, I have that much music that I just continuously make. And I think when I put out Neon Icon, then after like, I got like, after like six months, I got kind of antsy and then eight months goes by and then it's almost a year. I'm like, all right, we need to put out another album. And we're like building the album, Peach Panther. And then like, I was just like, it's very, it's done. And he was like, no, it's, it's it gotta be better than Neon Icon. And I'm like, no, we just gotta drop an album every year and just keep dropping and just drop the best videos. And like going back and forth like that. And like, in the end, it was ultimately like, 
they were right. I, sh I should have just been like continuing to add music, but then take the best pieces and make an, an album. And I should have been, uh, well, how was Neon Icon? Okay, then I got to make an album that's better than that. And until I make a better album than that, then don't put out the next album. And then when that album come out, then you make the, the next best one and you just keep going. And that's really how I should have done it. I should have been more... like understood like the, the 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 map and the plan of how what it means to be like a major artist or a big artist or icon or whatever and just continuously do that but instead i was just like no nah, well i'm i want to just drop i just want to keep dropping music and they're like all right cool but like you're just gonna have to do it like go you i mean if you i was like i actually they said do you want i mean no we're gonna do it this way and i was like no nah, i want i want to Drop this. Like, I was like, I'm gonna drop it somewhere else. Then it's like, what? What do you mean? Like, you can't do that. Like, why would you do that? You're already good. Mm -hmm. You're already on the yacht. <laughs> why would you jump into the, back into the water and go on the rowboat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no, I need 50 rowboats. Doesn't make sense. Right. You know, things worked out though. I mean, for everybody, I mean, it's, but. I just have so much music I just want to drop. Yeah. But but having a major label, like, it's, I mean, I guess it depends who, who you're asking. But for me, I mean, I should drop a neon icon too with them. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Well, listen, me and Diplo's We have songs. Uh, and then me and Diplo have like 10 songs that aren't out yet. Okay. Too. And I, with my uh, other new album that I've been working on for like four or five years, the um, Jody and the High Rollers album, with the Sapphire Stallion, uh, the Sapphire Stallion album with my band Jody and the High Rollers. I thought that's why I thought you brought the drums in. <laughs> you're like, oh, because your band. No, but um, but Diplo produced a track on there too. Okay, yeah, I mean, listen, Diplo is a musical genius. I mean, you can't take that away from him on any level. I mean, his his output and what he's put out. I mean, his hits and the way that he just sort of goes to different genres and he could do so many different types of music and yeah, reggae quality. and. The quality laser there. stuff. He's, uh, yeah, he's never put a bad song. You no, know he mean? never has. So, yeah. No, he's dope. And, you know, Neon Icon had Childish Gambino on it as a feature. Mm -hmm. You talk about a... Yeah. <laughs> someone who went on to do things at the very highest level. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, Mike Childish Posner's Gambino. on it. Mac Miller's on it. Uh, Slim Thug and Paul Waller on it. Uh, you know, and I think... Is uh, Tiptoeing in My Jordans, is that your biggest song ever? It's, it's up there. That one and Dulce Gabbana, Dr. Pepper, The Illest, like all those are are gold, yeah. at least. And and one of those could be platinum, I haven't checked. Yeah, Tiptoeing in My Jordans is at it's probably 15 million streams on Spotify. It's a big number. It's a big number. Well, you originally had a song with Chief Keef in 2012, uh, Cause My Gear. Yeah. And you guys, I don't think, worked together for like 10 years or so. And then Tiptoe 3 comes out. Yeah. Which is also one of your biggest songs. It's at 13 million streams on Spotify. How did that whole situation come back again, you know, since you guys worked together before? So both times that we recorded those songs, we record, well, we recorded it as what he had, it was the last one, it was the last day of school in his high, in high school for, for him. We recorded that at, uh, video at his grandma's house. That was the first one because my gear. And then on the other one, I was in LA and I was about to leave the next day and it was my birthday. And then he was like, you let me get on tiptoe three. And I went to his house and then we, we recorded that, the, the, the song. Mm -hmm. At, at his house. Okay. Yeah, he just hit me out of the blue and he's like, yo, I want to do tips of three. I was like, I'm in LA. And I was like, it's my birthday. He's like, happy birthday, come through. And I went to his house and recorded that. Yeah. So I've been to his house two times. And you recorded two big two songs, songs. Yeah. both times. Yeah. I mean, Chief Keep. Fourth of July's coming up, Chief. Chief Keep, Fourth of July's coming up. I mean, because how many tiptoes are there? Is there four now? I don't know. It's like five or seven. Five or, or seven, because I remember uh, a was a Yellow Wolf was on Tiptoe 4. Yeah, it's, it's getting out of control now. <laughs> what is this whole Tiptoe theme? Like, explain this to me. I don't know. Me. It's like, I mean, I feel like I put Tiptoe to any beat almost. 
and come up with some type of hook that's tiptoe related. I got, I have like probably another five that aren't out yet. Okay. Well, who are the collabs on the other tiptoe song? Like I said, is this Chief Keith, there's Yellow Wolf, and the other one's just you, or do you have other features on it? I don't remember. You got too many songs, man. It's a lot of songs. How many songs do you think you record in your life? If you were to just throw out a number. A thousand? It's more than that. 10,000? 10, 10,000, maybe. 5,000, 10,000. Five least. to 10,000 songs. More, yeah, more than 5,000, probably 10,000. Do you ever write or do you just go in yeah. and, okay. All right. Do you ever just punch in, punch out and freestyle? Yeah. I'll do that sometimes. What's the preferred method? It depends. If it's a, if it's a beat, I, first of all, I really like the beat. And I really like the beat, then I'll do a hook idea. And then I'll just like punch in and whatever sounds, whatever, it's, if it feels good, I'll keep it. If not, I'll just throw it away. Or I'll just take something that's like a harmony and then write. Okay. Your biggest songs, do they take a while to write? They're usually fast. Fast. Like, yeah. Cause then I'll, if I like a beat right away, then I think it like translates like that fast. What year did you leave uh, Matt Decent? 2015. 2015. Okay. Three years later, you signed a Black Bears label. Mm -hmm. What was the reason? So, okay. So for those three years, you were just completely independent? Um, I was with like BMG for one album, the Peach Panther one. The yeah. one that had like Lil Durk on it and Gucci Man, And yeah, that was with BMG. Mm -hmm. Just Sony, I guess. Is that like a Sony BMG? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So then what made you sign with Black Bear? Um, we, we were going to work on an album. And uh, yeah. He's, okay. He's a cool artist. He's dope. Yeah. He, he's really dope. Like, he's just uber talented. Yeah. So then we were, um, we were recording something. He's picking beats at his house. And Mike Posen was there. And we were working everything for the album. And then, um, yeah, then we went to Aspen. And then I, went, I had a tour that was going to be in uh, Australia. Okay. And then you guys just start talking about signing to his label? Yeah. Okay. So you signed to Black Bear label, to Black Bear's label. What changed after you signed to his label? Um, I don't know if I want to like spin into this really. Are you still on Black Bear? No. Okay, so you're no longer with the label. All right. When did you leave? Like a month after I got my, my chain and stuff from there, and we the we didn't end up putting the album out. Okay, so it was a deal that never really happened. All right. Okay. Are you fully independent now? Yeah. Do you like that better? I mean, yeah, but I just, it's, I, I, yeah, it's okay. Okay. Do you plan on signing with anyone else or do you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I just uh, um, had to clear up a few things from pre previous, like, legal things with previous manager people wanting too much percentages of things they weren't a part of. Yeah. And so that got cleared up. So now I'm actually like free to do whatever. Okay. And your new single, uh, I Want a Ferrari with Wiz Khalifa. Mm -hmm. Is that totally independent? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. How did how did so that really did, come together? Because you, you and Wiz had done a bunch of songs together. Yeah, we did Versace Python. He did a, a, a feature on that. Versace Python a long time ago. It was supposed to be on the album for Neon Icon. And then uh, Matt Decent called me and they were like, hey, yeah, that, that feature he did, um, his label, I think it was with Atlantic. Mm -hmm. At the time they were like, yeah. uh, they want, they want $200,000 and we just don't have the budget for that, for that, for this, because really Mac Miller and Ch Charles Gambino and all these other artists did this basically for, for free for you. And so we can't just like, we're big and stuff, but we just can't pay 200,000 for somebody. And then um, I just hit Wiz, I was like, um, I know you did the feature, how does this work? Like, they, 
your label saying they got the they got to pay them two hundred thousand. He's like, I don't know really. And I was like, Yeah, me. They're okay, cool. And then basically, like, it wasn't up to him. You know what I mean? Somebody owned the rights to his verses, and you know, as you go further into music, you realize that people have you know labels that have a plan or this album is coming out this time so can't distract them with somebody else's album in a feature and blow up their project when we're trying to make our money off of this over here so i understood it eventually and but that was 10 years ago so we had known each other i interviewed him I, I was like way way back um at mtv and i was doing interviews for mtv mm -hmm. it was like vibes or something MTV vibe. right so, so then you guys got back time. together for this song, which I'm assuming is not costing you 200000 No, no, everything's worked out yeah, with me and him now. And we did the video actually too, and it's but not yeah, out yet. Yeah, the video's not out yet. Right. So is he doing the hook on that song? Mm. I'm trying to figure out what, what part is, is he's, He has a verse. So he has a verse. Yeah, he's a second part. Okay, and you're doing the hook? I'm on the hook. Okay, got it. Right, because I remember you would put up like a, a snippet, like an audio thing, but right. it was just a loop of right, the video. Right, that's just audio. Yes, I couldn't really tell mm -hmm. what was going on. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, listen, Wiz, psh, I mean, once he did the Fast and Furious thing, yeah, that like song, the biggest, he, he, he just went through the stratosphere. That yeah, was, he has the biggest like video in history or something. Yeah, I had like billions of views or something like that. Yeah, that, that was a monster. Uh, okay, so this song is on the new project? Yeah, Cherry Chupacabra album. One more time. Cherry Chupacabra. Cherry Chupacabra. You like it? I love it. Right. <laughs> Cherry Chupacabra. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's on there. Uh, okay. Um, the tattoos. I, I remember when, when we first met, you had a ton of tattoos. Uh, what I didn't know until I saw an interview recently was that you actually wanted to get an, the NBA logo on your face. Who said that? You said that. When? In an interview. I don't oh. remember which one. Oh. You said you wanted to get the NBA logo on your face and then the tattoo artist talked you out of it. Oh, maybe. Maybe I said that. Does that sound kind of familiar? I, I mean, I maybe said that, but I don't know if I was going to really do it. Huh. Yeah. Have you gotten more tattoos since last time? Well, I think, yeah, I don't remember the neck stars last time. I don't know. Frosty, I'm up right here. Yeah, I don't think that was on there. Probably. I don't think Slimer was on there. Well, was it? Probably not. Okay. Would you ever tat your face? Mm, I have to have a billion dollars. I, I think I think it's actually. I don't think I would. Yeah, I, I don't see you with the face tats. I don't really want. One. I think your 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 look is sort of unique because you don't have the face tats these days. You know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> I don't know. I think when you if you get a certain, I don't know. I, I mean, anything could change at any time, but I, I don't plan on getting a face tat. Would you get one? I don't have any tattoos, period. One For $1 billion cash. For $1 billion cash? Yes, I'll get a face tat. NBA logo. Yeah, NBA logo for a billion dollars cash. No, you, no, 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 wait. No you got to get, so, uh, you know, like the cherries emoji? Whatever tattoos you want to do for a billion dollars, you and then know right how to here. do. No, you. Where it gets cherries right here. And right. then right here it says cherry cheeks. Cherry cheeks yeah. for a billion? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. No problem. Nice. Whoever's listening to this, cut the check. <laughs> I'll meet you at the tattoo parlor. The cherry. You can even, the, the person who's paying it could even do the tattoo themselves. Oh, I don't sure. care how fucked up it looks. Damn. It's a billion dollars, man. That's a thousand million. You can get, uh, you can have the best tattoo artist do it. Okay. Like 3D cherries. 3D cherries. Cherry cheeks. I'll do it for All a billion. Right. That's written in like old English. <laughs> what, 3D? 3D? No? no, it's like retro vibe, like Tron letters. Okay. Cherry cheeks. I'm with it. I'm with it. Well, it seemed like, um, you know, when you were first starting, it seemed like you were, I mean, obviously you had like sort of like a unique kind of sound and everything else like that, but I felt like it was more traditionally hip hop. And I feel like over time, you've sort of evolved into more like more country music kind of influences and stuff like that to a certain degree. You don't think so? I, I mean, I'm from Texas. So yeah. I'm a, I've always listened to every like country artist as well. Yeah. But I, I listen to 
Madonna and Phil Collins and Brooks and Dunn and it's like I mean th there's so many genres of music that I listen to but like synth wave music and my my album that I'm doing with my band is like it is more than just one type of genre yeah and it's not I mean I have some country songs type songs yeah but I I kind of separate things I think but but it's still my way of doing it so I have like when I said I've over a thousand something songs or whatever like maybe 500 are rap songs maybe 250 are like synth wave band songs maybe 50 to 100 are like kind of punk rockish because you've heard my cocaine song and mm -hmm. th things like that. I mean even like neon icon was a good example of music that I because it was all it's a multi, time is on there and then there's like some uh, uh time is on there and then and there's rap songs you know and then there's like some bandish type you know so I mean I think I've been doing multiple genres of, of music of, if somebody was to try to put it into a category or box, but ultimately I have to be like, I have to enjoy the song. I have to like, love the beat. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of times you see artists, like I think Yellow Wolf is an example of, of this artist, you know, Kid Rock is also an example. They kind of start out more traditionally hip hop, but as their career progresses and they see who their audience is and who's coming to their shows, they start to kind of, you know, transition a little bit and kind of expand and have more of a you know kind of a mix between hip-hop and other genres of music do you feel yourself like based on your audiences i think with our real artists it's not necessarily a like kind of adhering or trying to uh, maybe labels from from a marketing standpoint we'll try yeah. to do that like what's the best who's our customer what's the best dollar the thing to make the dollars but i think with artists they kind of eventually just evolve evolve or like kind of smooth out the edges of where they feel comfortable doing what they feel i've been in, in the studio with yellow wolf and, he, and he'll bring in like different instruments and bring in different people and we've been in Nashville and he like he, that's him he's mm -hmm. he he can he has a band he has music he's musically inclined and he'll like want to hear certain things on track so I don't think it's him trying to like be like be something for a, a people or something like it's like or Kid Rock or whoever like BC Boys didn't they have a band before they then they became a, no it's the other way around they, they started off with like samples and then they went to a band on their second album okay and they kind of stuck with that well, what did they, the, 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 they, third, no, the third album? The third album. The third album they went with the band. I thought they yeah. blew up. They blew up off rap, License like to Ill. Right. That was like kind of, kind of death, like this, death this, jam. This, this punk rap. Exactly. Rap, right. But before that, didn't they have? Oh had yeah, a you're lot right. No, no, yeah, yeah, they, they, they were they, they were a punk they had, band. They had right. A mullet type song and shit like that. Right. You're right. So 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 what pops off to people? What they like? Oh. Oh, I like that right there. Well, you didn't like it for five years, but now you like this? Well, yeah. this is a little different, though. And then to them, they might be like... It's the same shit. No, it's the same shit. You didn't hear all the shit? Yeah. And it, to us, it sounds the same. Or, or you know what I mean? And then to the to a consumer, they might hear one thing in one, something that makes them like an artist or like something. And then, but then this artist might have, they're just doing what they do. And you know, who's whoever's seeing what they see in their perception of what they might have fifty other songs that they think sounds like that, but then you like this one song about them, and it's like seen as oh, this is rap, but they've been doing rhyming and saying, you know what I mean? It's, so then you, now it's like you're talking about instruments that are played in the background, so the production value or the level of quality might be different, and that was maybe a label is pushing a certain song, so that's what you hear, so that's what. You're seeing, like, there's so many different aspects go. Well, like Bubba Sparks is a good example of this, right? Because he started off doing he was with country, Timberland. with Timberland, doing country rap tunes. And it was sort of a, a mix between the two. And he kind of started that whole kind of white boy country rap genre, I would say. Maybe I'm wrong, but from, from my point of view, that was the first major label white rapper to be doing that type of music. Okay. Right. I'm not saying that no one. I'm, 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 I'm just I'm right. listening. Him. And then as his, you know, because we just did an interview with him, you know, recently, as his, you know, once he got off the label and he kind of started doing things on his own, he started doing stuff more with country singers. Okay. And what he's doing now, I mean, it worked for him. You know what I mean? And he still continued to have a, a successful career, not the same kind of career he had with Timberland, but 
a different type of career with a different, slightly different type of audience, and it, and it worked for him. And you see what I'm saying? So I, I, I've seen that sort of with, with certain artists evolve yeah. over time. I mean, as people get more into their own lane, like you're going to kind of, you're going to start doing, I mean, the outside world of people, if they like something, you're either going to go be like, this isn't me and drastically go somewhere else. Or they, they're like, oh, we like this version of you. Then it's like, well, okay, well, this is what I like of myself anyway. So I'm, I want to make this type of music, you know? So I, I'm not sure exactly where he's from. I think Tennessee-ish type. He's from Georgia. He's from like Some a, a over different there, right? So it's like, that's all, that's where different types of music are played and bands and country music is. So it's like- Grange, up, Georgia. That's where he's from. So, you know what I mean? So, and, 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 and Yellow, I think, is from Alabama. Yep. So it's a mix of that. So I'm from Texas. So it's not like a fake thing. It's like it's I grew up listening to yeah. Swisher House and Garth Brooks. So it's, yeah, it is what it is. Like, well, well, didn't you say that you were planning on dropping an actual country album? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get to that level where I, because I'm starting with my band. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, eventually I'll, I'll I'll go to Nashville and 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 stay there a month and hit up Yellow Wolf and hit up other people, uh, you know, other artists and get the best instrument players in there and try to put together the best country album. I'll eventually do that. Well, yeah, I mean, what's interesting right now, and this is the only time that I remember this actually happening, is that country music is actually dominating the charts right now. Have you noticed that? Like like George, uh, sorry, uh, Morgan Wallen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's Like he's got the number one song in the country right now. That, that Last Night song, which is a great song. And it's almost like, it's almost like a it's mix between like trap and country music in a, you know, in a, in a really. He has a, he has a song with Lil Durk as well. Yeah. I mean, there, I mean, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of different genres of, of music, but I think with like country music is it, they don't, uh, uh, the country artists, f fans of country music don't give a shit about what's on social media. And that's the, hmm. uh, and, and same with rock. But, but, wait, wait, hold on. I've, I've never heard this before. So country music. Fans don't care about social media? Not if you're a real fan, because you don't give a shit what somebody's talking about. Huh, okay. Because you're going to like what you're going to like. Okay. You aren't swayed by the popularity fact. Like hip-hop. And maybe, here, and, and, and if, maybe, may, I don't, I, I, I get, I, maybe. I, they must care, because that, that if that's what's on. People talk about hip-hop or rap or something on social media, and, and, and who doing what or something, or... It has a big effect. It's more it has a big than... effect on the artist. Like, you know, for right. example, like people aren't but listening. But not anywhere, not in any okay. other gym. So, okay, so for example, right? And you don't have to comment on it. Okay. But, you know, for example, people don't like Gunna right now because, you know, they say he cooperates, so he's not putting out any new music. And, you know, people are wondering whether he's going to get back to his heights or whatever else. Whether you agree with it, don't agree with whatever. But I'm saying, but this is influencing his music career right now because social media is saying a certain type of thing. Okay. You're okay. saying in country music, it's not like that. I'll, I'll put it like this. Like it, it, with country music, it's about the music. Mm. Bon Jovi, I haven't seen him on any social media meme sites or posts or anything. He can sell out a stadium like that. He could sell out. He's like every single year, he's like one of the highest paid artists. And this is just one of many actual musician, artists, rock stars. You don't have to have an Instagram to be a star. You don't have to have all that. You just like, it's like that. And that's more of what I would, I mean, I want to be, I mean, like, I want to be about music where it's not influenced by something on the social media of what people are talking about. And that's what I think brands should be more about. And, and even social media sites, like if you want the stars to stick around and you want people to be posting on your site and not go to somewhere else, then don't let that type of shit that could fuck up somebody's money be promoted. Like shut that down. Shut down the commenting that something negative or could drag somebody down or this person did this or something. Shut down the meme sites that are dragging someone down or potentially, I think that, you know what I mean? That are pushing for, oh, he said this, she said this. because. Ultimately, I think musicians ended up being musicians to get away from the he said, she said, principal yeah. said this, or you're getting punished for this, you're doing this. Maybe that's more, I don't know why that's only in a certain genre of music, but for country or for rock stars, like it's just about the music. Yeah, I mean, look, I think that, well, number one, I think it's easier to be a rapper than a singer. 
right? Whether it's country western, R and B, whatever, you know, classical. Yeah, you just make a sound called page and just just yeah. Rap to anyone could technically thing, rap. Yeah. Not everyone could be great at rapping, but everyone could technically rap. Whereas, like, I can't sing. It doesn't matter <laughs> how how many social media followers I have. I just can't sing. So I think with rap, it's easier to get your foot in the door. And once you get your foot in the door, once you pump up your social media numbers by doing crazy shit or running up on people or, you know, lighting your hair on fire or whatever else. Now, you're in, now you, if you're doing shit like that, you're playing into the social media game. Just go make music. Just do your music. Thing. Just right. make music. If you're, I think if you're focused on internet shit, you're going to be doing internet shit. If you're fo- like, but also if you, if you, let's say you, 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 do a song you record it on your computer and you upload it and you like make and it goes on TikTok and you go viral. Cool, keep making that. You don't have to engage in the back and forth with talking about people on social media. And I think that, I think if you get stuck in that, you get trapped into that matrix of thinking about well, he said this or she said this or how do I do this or what, like you don't have you, you don't have to go onto American Idol and be accepted and everybody gives you a thumbs up and Simon Cowell is like. That's pretty good. You're gonna be a star. And you're going to Vegas. Or however, fuck. You don't have to get stand on stage and be judged by somebody. You can make your own music and just worry about that. Which you've done all these years. Always. I'm yeah. always gonna not care what people think. Right. Because although you do have, I mean, the visual aspect of what you do is a big part of who you are. But you're right. You're not really a social media guy like that. I mean, you're not beefing with people. You're not doing social media The only thing that stunts. I think social media, and I've always said this, the only thing that social media is is free promotion of whatever you're selling. Mm-hmm. So, like, I wear neon because I love neon. If it's not neon and I get the prototype of the thing, I'm, like, send this back. It's not good enough. You know what I mean? So that's not me trying to stay on brand. That's me. That is what I, that's what I like, and that's why it's my brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it has to be something that I, I like or that I like to promote. And that's what social social media is. It's like you you build up your whatever whatever you're selling. If you aren't selling something or you aren't like saying something good or do, like if you aren't doing so, something that's positive production and profitable for you, you don't have to drag somebody else down. Like you could only talk about the shit that you like and you want. And that's... Same as MySpace, same as making your own website, same, use whatever is the popular site to promote and sell whatever you're selling. Yep. Like right now I'm selling non-dairy horchata coffee, eight ounce cans, loud brew. Loud brew. Yeah. I gotta try some. I'll, I'll get you a case. I need a and case. It comes with a four with a jersey. Okay. I've got a special, <laughs> I got a special fridge in my, in my house of just like soft drinks, like okay. a soft drink fridge, so. Send you a fridge too. There you go. <laughs> you want a little fridge? You put it right by your bed. Sure. Well, I'll take cans. the fridge. Gotcha. I'll take the fridge and the and the drinks and the four wheeler jersey. Well, one thing I never realized uh, before I started doing some more research on you is you're actually Jewish. Have your mom, my mom, which makes you I'm Jewish. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I and am whatever uh, I am. Yeah, I mean I'm Jewish as well. Okay. Uh, and your mom's family was actually Holocaust survivors. Yeah, I think pretty much everybody's Jewish family was Holocaust survivors. Not mine. No? Well, we were in Russia. Right. I mean, a bunch of my family got killed by Nazis through like the bombings but and you stuff. But survi- your family survived. We, we, our family survived. That's why you're here. Well, my, my grandfather had 10 brothers and sisters who all got killed. Because he, he joined the military and he left mm-hmm. and then his city got bombed and yeah. they all died. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it is Glad what you're it here. is. What's that? Glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here also. I'm glad I'm not in Kiev. Well, I, I actually grew up in Kiev, in the Ukraine. And I can just imagine if I stayed there, what my life would be right now. I'd be in the military <laughs> at 49 years old. <laughs> going, how the hell did I get here? Not good. You get locked in like that over there? Like they make you stay in the military? Right now they are, yeah. I mean, they Crazy. need all the people they can yeah. get. They're there at war with Russia. Um, did you ever practice being Jewish? Did you have no, a bar like mitzvah or anything? Religion and stuff in my past is always, I've seen it as just drama and back and forth with, uh, cause like my dad's side is um, Christian. Okay. And my mom's side, Jewish. And mm-hmm. I was named Horst. That's my real name, Horst. And that's a German name. So Horst Christian, that's my middle name Christian. So I was kind of named that by my dad to make sure that the, and I was the oldest son so that I didn't, so I was kind of like branded so that I wasn't. As a Christian. 
So I didn't spill name. So I didn't get like scooped up by the by the Jews. By <laughs> my other half of my family that I am that's that. But yeah, but my dad's side of the family didn't have any money and he didn't really ever close with his family like that. And he, you know, so he wanted to just be, you know, he wanted me to be his son, you know, and my mom's side of the family. They're either they have a family business. My grandfather used to drive to on my mom's side. Used to drive to different sites. This in the fifties and sixties, driving on the Lincoln Continental to every job site that he would find. They're doing construction. He'd get out of his car, business suit on, walk up, find the foreman or whoever's the other guy in a suit, and be like, "Whatever the, the pipes cost for this, I'll beat the price. If this is your first." Uh, building, you're building a franchise. Uh, here's my card. I'll beat any price and have the, and our best customer service. If anything breaks, I'll fix it. I have. I'll, I'll, be, I'll beat any the pipe. I don't know about the other structure of the building, but the, the pipes. Uh, I got the best. We have the best. The best everything when it comes to pipes. Then he'd go to every site around America and and do that. And then he started that business and then became very lucrative. I I and I I didn't get a part of the family business because I'm. I was branded from day one, and there, and there was and there was a huh. lot of back and forth of oh. Jewish and Christian and this and whoever started it, whatever, even though it was my dad, whatever. I'm 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 born my dad's son, right? So you can't. What are you going to do? You're just a kid. But every time that somebody starts talking about religion, I'm like, I don't want to be part of that. I'm going to play basketball. I'm going to go outside. Like I don't huh. want to. So I never really got into the whole. Yes, teach me everything, so I could. I don't ever got. I, I, I never saw anything good of being a, a really a part of either one. I didn't get. A, yeah. Then nobody, nobody cut me. Here's your bar mitzvah check for one million, ten million dollars. I never got another shit like that. So why am I gonna want to sign with the with the, this thing? Or then if Christian, if it's all you do is you start fights you, and you do something. Else, I don't want to be. It's not that I'm not. I don't believe in God. I do believe in God, but I also don't believe in man telling me a man-made thing, you need to do it like this, otherwise you're bad. You could go like this, yeah. or otherwise you don't get any money. Like, nah, I don't want to be part of none of that shit. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm essentially an atheist or agnostic, depending on how. You believe in God? Not really, no. But who who gave you so much uh, ideas and, to build everything and build your empire and, you know, I and, think, and, I and, think, have, uh, and have emotions and have compassion and caring? Don't you have to install that? into the phone, didn't Steve Jobs have to, to know what this camera does and what these buttons do to, to be able to hand out phones to people or to sell them? I mean, I believe in science, I believe in biology. I think that the brain has synapses and you know, I think there's chemical reactions and I think a lot of it is learned behavior and you know, and yes, everyone is born with a certain type of personality you know, that's unique to them, that isn't necessarily taught, but I don't believe that there is a you know, me and, you know, I just interviewed uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. You, you know, you're familiar with him. And, you know, he kind of feels the same way. He doesn't feel like there's this universal intelligence that's kind of running the universe. If you go to, you go online and you, in, a, in a Google search, you type God, gods worshiped by humans. There's a tally of all the gods ever worshiped by humans in the history of civilization. And it just goes screen after screen after screen after screen. So when you say do you believe in God, is there is it which God? Is it Zeus? Is it Poseidon? Is it the the Jewish God? Is it the Christian God? Because the Jewish God from the Old Testament is filled with wrath. Okay, all right, and and smoting and smiting and whatever the the, the past tense verb is. And so, to and the New Testament, the, God is kinder. All right, A nicer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So you look at all of this and you say, is that the God you want me to comment on? Or is there some other God? Typically, it's the Judeo-Christian blend there. In that context, I would say in my studies of the universe, I, I value evidence and I don't see evidence for any kind of um, active intelligence or power over anything. Yeah, and But you if you had that evidence, show it to me. I'm yeah. all in. Well, I mean, you said you don't like to be labeled an atheist, more agnostic. Yeah. And the definition of agnostic is a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence or nature of God. Yeah, I'm not, or of I'm anything. Not, that's, I, agnostic comes closer to what I am 
than atheist does. Yeah. But all of that rest of that baggage that agnostic carries is is off the edges for me. You see, I'm saying from from here, do you have hope that you get to be that you go to somewhere better? No. You don't want that? I I think this is what we have right here. I think while I'm here, I need to make the most of it. Yeah. And I need to leave a positive impact for my family, you know, when I'm gone. Okay. But I don't think I'm going to go to heaven. So you care about your, 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 your family and the, the certain people you care about yes. and you have a compassion for and that you're more for whether you know somebody or not. So when you're, spe- that's your spirit. Well, I so don't necessarily spirit. believe in a spirit. Huh? I don't necessarily believe in a spirit. You know what I'm saying? And, and we even talked about how, how like, uh, well, then what, when, when what x-rays, you know, when they first invented x-ray machines, you know, all the religious people are like, oh, let's just x-ray people as they're dying to see if there's something that leaves their body or maybe, you know, there's something is happening on the x-ray machine and they weren't able to find anything. So. Okay. I mean, listen, I, but I have Christian people and religious and Jewish people in my family that, that very much believe that. And I respect their point of view. I'm not going to say that what I'm saying is right and you're wrong or whatever. Okay. I have Muslim friends. I, I totally respect people who do believe in God and do believe in heaven and do believe in souls and spirits and everything else like that. I think that's fine. And I think that ultimately if you, you, and I think religion is a good thing overall. You know I mean? I think that's, you know, when people say I want to be like Jesus or like God, it's, they're trying to be the best version of themselves. And ultimately I think it's a good thing. I just, you know, I have my own personal beliefs when it comes to that. Well, I hope you go to heaven. Okay. I hope so too. (laughs) If one does exist, you know what I mean? Um, Well, you had a project called the white West, Mm -hmm. which is a playoff of Kanye West. Yeah. When you've seen all the Kanye, being that you are half Jewish and you've seen all the I love Hitler and, you know, all the Jewish stuff that he said, does that. You're bringing it up in, in a in a conversation, right? Yes. I think Kanye is just a marketing. He want, He's going to do whatever he's going to do. And I'm not saying it's just for attention. I think maybe he just want maybe. Maybe he just wants to be like, pick a side. You either fuck with me or you don't. If you don't like me, then stop talking to me. I don't know. I've, I've, I've actually never met him, mm-hmm. you know? And even if I met him, I couldn't say what he's thinking. Has he ever killed anybody? I don't think so. No. Has he ever stole some money from somebody and ruined somebody's life? Has he ever st- stole a hamburger out of a homeless man's hand while nobody's looking and st- st- like, Throw a bucket of water on him in the freezing cold. I don't think he's that type of person. Well, but but what what is actually true, and you know th- this has been studied and and so forth, was that when he started going on all these anti-Jewish rants, the amount of violence towards Jewish people did go up. You started to see a lot more anti-Semitic that- stuff. You know, signs on the L.A. freeway, Kanye was right. You know, and stuff like oh, that. Okay, well, you, you know, see what I'm and, saying? And, and who and who knows? I I mean, I don't wish any harm on anybody. Yeah. And I, I don't think in punishing some people or hurting a whole community because or a, some, some certain race of people or culture because you feel like whatever. Like, I don't think you should steal from nobody and I don't think you should physically hurt anybody. Yeah. Yeah, is there freedom of speech? Sure. But I don't think when you put a magnifying glass on something that somebody's saying and it's bad, then yeah, you're going to get some type of negative reactions and it's going to spread. So I think... Like on social media platforms and all this shit, if it's not good energy, if you don't, I don't watch movies that I leave at the movie theater and I feel I feel worse than when I went in. Mm. I, I don't watch news. I watch cartoons. That's my that's my choice. I watch Family Guy and South Park. Okay. If I want to keep up with the news, I watch South Park. <laughs> yeah, gonna, the news does gonna, spill into South Park. Yeah, that's true. You're just gonna like. There you go. Yeah, if it's something bad, don't watch it. Mm-hmm. If somebody's saying something I don't want to see. Turn out, change the channel. There's a there's a billion channels. You can even make your own channel these days. I do have my own channel. It's called Flat TV. Now, you can just sit there and watch those reruns. That's right. I just watch my, my listen to myself talk all day long. And did run like run some plays. Be like, okay, I shouldn't ask that question. I'll exactly. do it. Like improve your stuff. That's all you exactly. to do. In January uh, on 2018, you made an announcement that you're quitting cocaine. You said, uh, PSA, don't do cocaine anymore. A lot of people are being sold fentanyl, a deadly drug mixed in with their bags of cocaine. So for that reason, I'm out. You shouldn't play with your life. 
We have a bright future. Let's enjoy the fresh mm -hmm. air with Versace nostrils and a clear brain. When did I say that? January 2nd, 2018. Oh, nice. Oh, that? That's nice. Well, you talked about how you dealt with some addiction issues. No, I didn't. I was never addicted to anything. No? You've never been addicted to nothing? No, I'm not. Okay. But you did quit back in 2018. Okay. Was there something specific that happened? I know the fentanyl thing was happening, but was there, was there an event that said, okay, I'm, I'm done? I mean, just people, like people have like, you know, died from fentanyl, you know? I don't remember, but yeah, people aren't supposed to do drugs or whatever. So if somebody said, do you want drugs? Are you on drugs? T tell me I'm on drugs. Tell me I'm on drugs. You want me to tell you that you're on drugs? Yeah. You're on drugs. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. You just That's do that. how it works? Yeah, and I would normally run out the door, but <laughs> but no, I'm not. I got you. Well, listen, I mean, you've talked about drugs in your lyrics. Uh, you know, we've we've talked about our times together. Yeah. I tried I tried lean with you. Yeah, you tried time. drugs for the first time. Right. I think you actually offered me Coke at once, and I was like, nah, no. No. That never happened? No, I'm not. Okay. No, I'm not. Right. Maybe I did. Okay. But if I did, it, I guarantee it didn't have fentanyl in it. I know can you guarantee right. that? I can guarantee it. <laughs> right. Well, you, we you can know, go back in time. Well, see, 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 with me though, like, I mean, listen, I've I've done drugs before. Like, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm straight edge. I mean, I, I've done acid, I've done mushrooms a bunch of times, uh, I've done Molly a couple times. Okay. Um, but cocaine is a weird one for me yeah, because Molly's well, better. Well, my friend overdosed and died at 23 off cocaine. Right. How long ago was that? Oh, many, many years ago. Did, was it cocaine? See, we don't, it was you don't cocaine. Know. Yeah, it was cocaine. Well, maybe, I mean, I, maybe I, it was I was the first I mean, batch of fentanyl. Uh, this well, no, no. Fun. Okay, but this was not, okay, hold on. 23, this was 1997. Mm. How, do you, how much did he do? Was I have no idea. Time? I have no idea. But Were you with him? I, I wasn't. But what had happened was he had had a couple heart attacks from cocaine already. He had had a couple oh, overdoses. See? So, so he was basically, Brand. he was sort of like, he was, he was working sort of, he was like in the gambling, sports gambling business. And he was just doing a lot of partying and going Damn. to Vegas. And he had had two overdoses already on cocaine. They revived him. And then they finally found him in his hotel room in Vegas dead off, of, off of a cocaine overdose. Cause I guess no one was there. He was just by himself sniffing and he died. And I remember going to the funeral going like, I'm never going to try this because if this is what happens off cocaine and this is someone who I looked up to, yeah, I said I'm I'm good. Not to say, listen, I have friends who've done cocaine that are perfectly fine. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm just saying that for my personally, yeah, my personal experience seeing that, I said I'm good. And at 49, I've never tried it, and and that's and that's fine. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to try it now. It's, sure, it's been it's been that long. definitely don't try it now. Yeah, <laughs> it'll it'll go worst time too. too late. But but what's interesting is that. In January of that of 2018, you said that you're quitting, you know, because of fentanyl. Eight months later, Mac Miller, who you did Aquaberry Dolphin with, died off of fentanyl. Did you and Mac Miller maintain a relationship after that song? I mean, somewhat, but we I don't think we like got to hang out again after then, you know, but, but again, like people when you're rock star and you 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 make you're making music and you're catching vibes to make more music. I mean, ultimately, you're doing all this other stuff, you can do your interviews, you could go hang out with people, you could party, you could do all this, but ultimately you might go catch a vibe, you like feel good at a party and then you leave and then go to the studio at 2 3 in the morning, you know. And I see him be, is that he's just a constant worker. You know, we made that song that we made at his house. We made it from the ground up, made the beat, and we had fun. And it was it was, it was easy and fun to work with. So, I mean, him partying, it's not even, when the word partying for an artist is different than maybe a, somebody who doesn't do music. Mm -hmm. So him doing some type of drugs, like, I mean, somebody should have been there maybe with him and testing every single thing before it goes from, this person to his hands, maybe that. Does anyone ever actually do that? Does anyone There's, actually I mean, test you, drugs? I mean, you should. It's supposed to be very should, important. But just like, anyone just actually like any do that? food that you eat, you should read the ingredients at least on the back. Yeah, but that's because it's commercially produced. Cocaine, you right, don't know where the, the fuck it comes from. And it's yeah. white, it could be anything. Yeah, but there is fentanyl tester strips, I think now. Oh, there is? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. So somebody should be testing that before it even goes to his hands. 
But maybe so far back then, maybe I don't. I'm, this was 2018. It was five years ago. Yeah, I mean, maybe like somebody should have been doing that. Right, because Lil Peep died maybe about a year before that. Yeah, it was in bad, 2017. Yeah. Did you know Peep at all? Yeah, I, we were hanging out a few days before that happened. Really? We got matching tattoos. Really? Yeah. Oh, damn. I the, didn't know um, the, This tattoo with the race box, we got that backstage at his show, and then like three days later, yeah. So you and Peep were close? Yeah, we actually, yeah. Peep was dope, man. Yeah, he was, he was. Um, what was that one song that he did with uh, McConan that uh, falling down? His like, be what's it called? Ben's Ben's truck. Yeah, yeah. That, that was blowing up. Like he blew up a after everything. That's uh, sad. Okay, so you and Pete were were closer than than you and Mac Miller. So, do you think that we led don't, that was our first time hanging out? Oh, that was your, oh, so that was and Before that, I was on tour and he was on tour and he FaceTimed me and we were talking and he was like, I'm at a show and somebody came to my meet and greet line and they gave me these glasses. And I have the glasses, still it's like these Prada glasses that were like splatter paint. And he was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give these to you one day when, when like, where you at on your tour. And I was like, I'm gonna be in Dallas in a few days. And I think I was in LA and I was like, and then he was like, I'm gonna be in Fort Worth. And then, then both of us, at the same time, we were both in Dallas Fort Worth for like three day period. So I went to his show and got tattooed. And the next day I had a show and he came to that show. And the next day he like drove from Texas and I was like going this way. And then he went to like New Mexico, I think, mm -hmm. or Arizona or something like that. And it was, it was a couple of days later and I got news of that. I mean, you guys have matching tattoos and then right afterwards he dies. Crazy. That was He insane. dies of an overdose. How badly did that affect you? It was just like shocking. Like you, you don't know what to, it's just like everything goes blank for a minute. Do you know how old he was? Young, he was like 20, 21. 21. Yeah, just turned 21, I think. And he was just like getting in his, yeah. in his way. Like and, then, like, and then, and then blows up afterwards. Everybody says the same thing. Like he was a fool. When I was at a show, like it was, like he had a full like stage production and like it was a theme of his room. Like it was his, he had his, his bed on stage and there was a production bus that had pulled, like made, built his room on stage. And I was like, this is dope. And it was only like a, like a 500, 700 person venue. And there was probably like 500 people outside. And there was 500 people in. So even though it was a, a smaller venue, it was jam packed. They knew every word to every song. Huh. It was every single fan there was like, it looked like they all not looked the same, but they all were like, they could have been all friends or they were, they, you know what I mean? They loved his music and they're singing together. So if you love the same music, like his fan base was like already gonna be like multiplying and it's just terrible. You think that led up to you making that announcement? Cause a few months later, that's when you made that announcement. You were like, I ain't fucking with it no more. I mean, just, I mean, when people, when you get like, somebody comes in with the, like something like this, like it's so heartless. Like you could be about money or hustling and stuff, but if you're willing to kill people, like it's like, that's just like, that, that should be a, like, that's a problem. Well, yeah, I mean, it's going both ways. Not only are people dying from fentanyl, but you don't people, have repeat customers. Well, the people that are selling, that, that, that would sell the fentanyl. Like for example, the guy that sold the, the drugs to Mac Miller went to prison. He's being charged with like manslaughter. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, like this yeah, is, like, this is you know, you like you're selling drugs to catch murder cases? Like what's the point? Stupid, it's yeah. so dumb. The 80s, it's like you, you, you're you trying to have the best Coke because you want to fucking have the best rock stars get, buying kilos of cocaine from the, the purest from you. Like you wanted to, to be the cool drug dealer. Now it's just like, just idiots selling deadly poison for pennies. Yeah. Pennies for poison. Pennies for poison. Yeah. I mean, Michael K. Williams, we lost him recently, the actor. You know who that is? I He's the one with that scar on his face. Okay. You know what I mean? The, the, the black, right, right, the black right, right, actor with the scar yeah, on his face. Yeah, I know face. exactly. He was on The about. Wire, you know? I know um, you know, we, we, I mean, yeah, fentanyl is one of these things that makes you not want to do nothing, <laughs> you know, just smoke weed and that's it. Yeah. And you've said that, um, you know, once you started to get healthy, whenever you thought about doing drugs, you would just go to the gym. 
Yeah, I mean, you could just listen to me. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about, but don't do drugs. Yeah. If somebody says, oh, you're on drugs, then just say, uh-uh. no, I'm not. No, I'm not. And then run. And then run away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you offered a box 50 cent at one point for $2 million. I don't know. Things <laughs> you don't I've, remember I've this? I've said that were money related. <laughs> but I can actually see that. Because you're actually, y'all about the same size. I, dude, I'd, I'd fucking arm wrestle the rock for fucking 50 million. I, 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 what are you going to say? I mean, have you thought about boxing? I don't boxing? have any problems. Have you, have you thought about, because look at, look at what, look, I mean, I, even though it's not the same, you, you know, you, me, Jake Paul, we all are YouTubers in our own way. You know what I'm saying? We put out content on YouTube and that's our main platform for a lot of stuff that that we do. Jake Paul was a hardcore YouTuber and now is a very successful boxer. You know, you he got he 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 t- started taking it serious. Started taking it seriously. Then, he, then he, he went towards that. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, yeah. You know, I, I thought that now you would you would land in the, in the in the wrestling world. It didn't happen for whatever well, reason. Well, yeah. But you're but you're big now. I mean, you're muscular. Have you thought about boxing or anything of that sort or MMA or it's not really a thing? I mean, it's a, I mean, I'm, and I'm sure with even like whoever you're talking about, like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, like the money has to be involved. So somebody maybe came to him and said, yo, if you want to do this and you want this, we can make this happen. If somebody came to me and said, yo, stop smoking weed and stop doing all this. I, there's this contract right here, 5 million, you could be a WWE, go to training tomorrow. Then I'd probably do it. You know what I mean? Like if okay. the offer is there, or the, the resources are there to get to this high up goal that isn't overnight, but it's very reachable and you have a team of people that are already guaranteeing these steps of what we're going to do and they already have the contact with these people, I can throw out a billion ideas and try to, you know, manifest destiny. But manifest destiny is a lot easier when you have this structure of people and these connections, movie agents and things. And I'm not saying it's impossible or, or it's impossible for me, but to accomplish those pieces and steps, like that's beyond my control. You also have okay. to have sort of a base passion for it. I think, yeah, you, you know, Jake Paul really loves boxing. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure the money's great, but I think that he actually got into it and really was like, yo, I actually... What was really the, to- well, then you have to rewind to the initial first piece. What was his very first fight? And who offered him, hey, you want to get in shape and then you could box and then it does, you made five million in one night. D- then he was probably like, well, shit, that's how boxing is? Well, I yeah, so here we go. It. His first fight... Was he, when he beat a YouTuber named An, Anison Gibb, who I've never heard of, in January of 2020. That was his first one? That was his first one. Okay, yeah. then wh- who sponsored that event? I don't know. I'll, I'm going to break this down like a class and show you how he ended up being in boxing. So who, who sponsored that and, how, and, and, and what events did they throw? Who was all on that card? And how much did they pay him? Then you find out who the promoter was. So who made him that offer to initially get in boxing? And he was like, oh, this is easy. This is, and I, I actually feel good getting in shape. And then he just kept doing it. And well, next time I'm gonna look even better and get paid more. And the next time I'm gonna look better and get paid even more. Like that's, a, that's and, and then it's, now your real boxers being like, wait, how does he get paid this amount? And I only, I, I've been doing this since I was seven. I'm putting vows. <laughs> And I then you have Jake Paul, and then you have the, you know, now you jump off the top sky ropes with banana pants on, and you're getting millions for doing, you know? Yeah. Now, you, now it's fun. Yep. Shit's a lot funner when you're getting paid millions to do it, huh? This is true. All right. This is true. Uh, yeah. I mean, would I still be doing interviews if it was just free? If I didn't get nothing out of it? If I had to go back to my regular day job after doing this? Eh, I don't know. You would. I, I don't think I would. C- but you did it from the beginning, knowing that someday you get to this point. Exactly. Yeah, so I was definitely you... doing it for free back in two thousand eight. Yeah, but you did it all in the like in the vision I had of a vision. Yeah. Right. And, and I who think who gave that's... you that vision? Who installed that chip in you? Uh, I guess sixty minutes watching sixty minutes. All right, who put seeing... that? Who put that in front of you and gave you that spark? Watching sixty minutes. You're going to tell me it's God? Is this, is, this, is this where we're going? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, you, Oprah, Barbara Walters. Uh, Let me do assume that. I don't know. Based on our previous conversation, I don't know. I'm just trying to piece the pieces together. 
Uh, but yeah, no, listen, uh, you're right. A big check definitely makes it a, a whole lot more interesting. It makes you a lot more motivated. And uh, yeah, I mean, Blueface is doing well with the whole boxing thing. You know, I think he won his last fight. Uh, you see other rappers and YouTubers. I mean, Bosco 100, he's done some boxing. I Are mean, you saying you know Vince McMahon? Is this where this is going? I don't know Vince McMahon, actually. But I do know some some wrestlers. Okay. You know? Who owns the, what's that? D-A-Z-N. Does, I, I know what you're talking about. Well, you know, you know, the w, big one? What's the big? What's the biggest celebrity boxing thing? Oh, I'm not sure, but you know, WWE and UFC just merged. Hmm. That's insane. Nice. That's like a. You should interview Vince McMahon and be like, "Yo, I would love to." When are you gonna have Dale D'Antoni in there? The mm -hmm. million dollar mullet. Million dollar mullet. Yeah. But you, you claim to bring mullets back. I claimed? Yes. You said, or you, I physically did it, and, it's, you, you and said here you, we are five You years said, later. I've made mullets great again. This is what you said. I didn't say that. You never said that? No. I thought you said that. Somebody point. made an interview based around that. I didn't oh, say it. Oh, my did. bad. Somebody well, I feel you actually have made mullets great again. Okay. You know what I mean? I don't know any other mullet, you know, having people <laughs> outside of yourself that really has embraced a mullet like you have. I, I, Seriously, who, who, who's the, the number two mullet guy out there after you? See what I'm saying? There's nobody. It's just you. See, I should flip it around and interview you. Right. You're the king of the mullets. Uh, no? I mean, I just made a million dollar mullet. Million dollar mullet. <laughs> right, because you actually have the mullet out today. Usually you have the braids. Like, how often yeah. is it braids versus mullet? I switch it up. Switch I can it get up. a braid too. Hmm. It's just a million dollar mullet. You can switch it. Really Every mullet. mullet, you can't also get braids too. I mean, who do you think wore it better, you or uh, Joe Dirt? <laughs> Joe Dirt is kind of the OG mullet, mullet guy. It's not a wig. I know. His is a wig, though. Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect had a better mullet than me. The, the WWE guy. No, WWF. WWE. Oh, Mr. that was Perfect. WWF back then. Yeah, you're right. Before they switched over. Hold on. Let me look up Mr. Perfect's mullet. It's been a while. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> That's a mean mullet right he there. The blonde. He's got the blonde mullet. Okay. Nice. Guys. That's a mean mullet. Do you shave the sides or, or no? The barber does. The barber does. Because I remember, did you have lines at some point? They're, they're there. They're somewhere. there. Oh, I, yeah, I, there I, you I go. gotta get a barber. There we go. I need a barber out here. I there we go. I a barber this time. Hmm. Okay. So what's next for you? Um, Cherry Chupacabra. Album. Cherry Chupacabra. Um, right. Wow. What are the features on this? Can you say? Wiz. Wiz, of course, because mm. that song's out already. Damn, I forget. I think that's, that might be the only feature. Really? Because you're usually very feature heavy. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know why I got other features. My producer, Synth, Synthwave Sensei, he's my keyboard player, my band, so I, he's on a few beats on this. Okay. So, like, him, uh, I don't know. So just you and Wiz for now. Yeah. Okay. Is there another project after this that you're planning? Because I feel so like you man. have your blueprint early on in terms of like album names and themes. Yeah. Well, and I've, I've uh, this uh, song Neon Hong Kong. Hmm. That's like it's like the theme song for my like Asian uh, tour that I'm be doing. That's also that's the that's the what shoot. These are my shoes that are coming out. These are the carbon fiber cheesecakes. But I'm going through training with the carbon right fiber cheesecake so, like they're getting messed up like this like uh -huh. they're getting destroyed like uh, you, i gotta go through rigorous training so the customers don't have to deal with this like you know like when zion williamson like busted out of the nikes right they didn't get trained enough for that type of rigorous training so oh, these, Lonzo these are, ball with his uh, remember remember the the ball sneakers that he wore that fell apart on the court right so they, they, yeah. these aren't going to happen with these like so this part has fallen off so we have to make sure that each piece is proper so it's like back to the drawing board for those two pieces so this is like this is like i've been making these shoes building them for like three years and they're not for sale yet not yet there are, okay. I, I mean they, well, who's, they just, the, who's the manufacturer oh uh, school there's a brand school the brand school yeah. okay got so it we're doing a, it's a collab project because right, your merch game has always been top notch i mean yeah i mean I, I just like to make my own stuff sometimes if i can't find it or if i see something that i really like i don't necessarily mimic something i'd rather if i see something that i like but I, there's something i don't like about it 
Mm-hmm. Like it could be a pair of shorts that I like the material, oh, I like the material, but maybe the cut of it isn't right, or it's not long enough, or the seam isn't something. And like then I'll, I'll maybe try to find something, and make something better than that. But I'll maybe draw something though. But when you look at your overall income, what percentage do you think comes from per, from merch? I don't know if it varies because sometimes I, I'll invest like these shoes. I mean, I've put in over like a hundred thousand dollars in the last like right. four years. But so me investing into something and then it comes back right. like the cost of it. But but when you look at, for example, online sales, like merch at shows, everything else like that, would you say 10%, 20%, 50%? Like, I mean, I, t- I try to make, I try to make over half a million a year in merch. That's dope. In profit. Yeah. So but that means like so that's cost, at least a million but, dollars but gross. If it costs, but if it ends up costing me half a million and I break even, but I but I was trying to up the value and the quality, then I'm okay with that too. Yeah. Look, man, Riff Raff, we've known each other now for over 10 years. Uh to still stay in this game that's constantly changing, that's constantly evolving, that you, you know, every day there's a hundred thousand new hip hop songs being uploaded to the streaming platforms to, to really continue to, to raise the bar and, you know, still stay in your bag creatively. Cause I feel like you've never really just lost a passion for the music and lost a passion for being different and creative. And also like the type of respect that you have, uh, in the hip hop industry and you could just see the features that you've had over the years is like really a who's who of, you know, like I mentioned Childish Gambino, you had Gucci Mane, you had Lil Durk, uh, Wiz Khalifa. It, it's just like such a, a huge level of talent of people that have collabed with you just because I feel they respect what you've done. It's not just because you've been paying people. It's because they fuck with you yeah, artistically. Artists, artists yeah, artists exactly. really, really, you can meet me, like I meet with people instantly and then we yeah. hit it off. Like I remember we, we were hanging out, uh, you know, um, I mean, Alchemist worked with you. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, what's, what's the name of the producer? Remember we were hanging out at his house last time? Um, he, he also works with French Montana. Um, Mike Dean. Harry Fraud. Harry Fraud. Yeah. You know, it's like, you always see, you know, g Easy. Like, you always see all these really dope artists gravitate towards you and do projects with you. Just, I think they, they fuck with you artistically. And, um, you know, it's just great to see people from a decade ago still doing it big. Yeah. And you're still doing yeah. it big. That's, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? So Thank I you. respect you coming back here again. Thank it's you, It's been man. a while, you man. Great. You look great. Appreciate Thank you. It. You look great us. as well. Thank you. You know, you, you bulked up. I've thinned up. Yeah. And, uh, man, we're both happy. We both made lots of money since last time. Just a smile on both of our faces. Yeah. Keep and, going. And, uh, yeah, man, we're just going to keep going. I appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having me. Peace.